What's going on everybody, Gem Min here. Now usually I review the new weekly comic books or I'll do an omnibus review and this is neither but it's kind of the same. I went to my LCS Old Major Comics in El Paso, Texas to pick up my weekly books like I always do every week and I happened to catch this Ghost Rider pack that he put together. It's issues 1 through 19 of Ghost Rider by Howard Mackey and Mark Texera, or Tex. So I decided to pick this up because there is no omnibus for this classic material. This is the early 90s Ghost Rider that I remember as a kid. And yeah, there is a Ghost Rider by Jason Aaron omnibus out there, but they have yet to collect this in that oversized format. So I figured, you know what? I'll pick it up, give it a read, and do a review like I normally would. So we're gonna do some overhead shots, look at each individual issue, we're gonna take a look at the covers, and flip through the interiors to look at not only the artwork, get an idea of where the story went, but also look at some of these nostalgic ads. But before we do that, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Comic Tom 101. Comic Tom is in open enrollment for the June Mystery Mail Call. Not only will you get four to six comics at random for the 18 and older mature reader, but you're also going to get one kids exclusive, an homage cover done by Nate Made It, plus two variants going out at random. But also, it's going to include the new Fantastic Four number one exclusive Comic Tom variant of Kang the Conqueror by Alex Maleev. Make sure to secure a box for that June Mystery Mail Call. It's $35 plus $10 shipping for US only but don't worry any international peoples can follow comic tom over on whatnot and you can pick up a box via the buy it now we appreciate you tom now let's get into these overhead shots all right guys and here we have issue one ghost rider a spirit reborn javier saltares 1989 i actually just posted this recently in the xm studios facebook group that this needs to be the next ghost rider design i mean the bike would actually be easy to pull off even this exact pose would be a great statue uh, so then we're going to jump into it. We have Howard Mackey, who is the writer of this run. Javier Saltares is the penciler, did the cover art. Uh, Mark Texteria, or Tex, would later on take heavier uh, art responsibilities. But uh, in the beginning here, this is what we have. So we have uh, Danny Ketch, first appearance with his sister, going through the cemetery. A lot of bad stuff goes on through this cemetery, and... Uh, they get into it with some bad folks. Danny ends up stumbling upon a discarded motorcycle and when he touches the gas cap, a transformation happens and bam, he becomes Ghost Rider. So first of all, the art throughout this entire run so far has been nothing short of amazing. It's like, how has this not got the omnibus treatment yet, man? Uh, so then we have Ghost Rider taking care of the bad guys. The spirit of vengeance is back. And it's an origin story, so we're going to deal with this big action scene leading into the transformation, inevitably back to Danny Ketch. And then we start getting introduced to some of the bad guys. So we have Death Watch here, uh, which is posing as uh, this corporate entity. Then we have Wilson Fisk here doing his uh, sparring with his employees that he murders, apparently. <laughs> So that's cool. We get introduced to uh, Kingpin. Danny's sister ends up in a coma, Barbara. So Barbara Ketch in a coma. His mother's freaking out. Kind of really tragic uh, what happens with her throughout this whole run so far. Uh, but Danny, you know, has questions about the motorcycle, which leads to another change into Ghost Rider. So we get some more amazing artwork here in between this um, gang war, if you will. But starting to get a little idea of the new Ghost Rider powers, what he can do with his chain. And learning as a reader that Ghost Rider is obviously a good guy. He's here to punish evildoers and make them feel the pain that they inflicted upon others. Javier does the cover for issue two as well. Kind of throws you off a little bit like this dark cover one and then cover two is blue with uh, pinkish purple letters. But still great artwork, still a cool cover. Great opening splash page here. Ghost Rider out here punishing the evildoers. Gotta love the ads in these comics too, man. <laughs> we'll see a lot of cool ads throughout here for like Nintendo games and such. But just more Ghost Rider action scenes. The lengths that he'll go through to uh, to get people to talk. We get introduced to another villain. We have Blackout. And look, Double Dragon 2 for Nintendo. Amazing. <laughs> so Danny Ketch, almost like Peter Parker vibes a little bit. He lives in Brooklyn. Uh... He's supposed to be a teenager living with his mom, but reading back, he feels much older. He feels like he's in his 20s or so. Definitely feels like Todd McFarlane, Peter Parker right there. So a lot of kids going missing in the city. We have Blackout, uh, 
terrorizing people. We have Mask, which ties into the X-Men in a few issues, terrorizing people. So a lot of a lot of bodies turning up in the city and a lot of sightings of Ghost Rider, which obviously leads to the media and everybody thinking that Ghost Rider is a villain. Awesome way to end issue two. Cover for issue three is Dope Man, Ghost Rider vs. Blackout. Then we're back to the whole Death Watch story. We got the uh, X-Men Nintendo game ad. Very cool, man. So Danny goes in and checks on Barbara. His mother is obviously taking this uh, pretty bad, but a little optimistic that her, her daughter's in a coma, but she's getting better. Yeah, so they show a lot of what Ghost Rider's power set can be. The pendant stare, which he's referencing here, doesn't use it on Blackout, but squeezes him with a bear hug and ignites the place into flame, disfiguring his face. Again, the artwork, man. Awesome. Look at Comic-Con, June 1st through 3rd, 1990. We've got the cover for issue four, a Mr. Hyde issue. So this was a pretty hardcore book, man. They dealt with a lot of gangs, violence, drug use. There was a lot of deaths throughout this run, so it was definitely a mature reader. We meet up with Mr. Hyde, and I guess he doesn't have the full strength of his power or whatever. He's getting tossed around, not getting respect. Danny Ketch is basically just trying to juggle his life uh, with the Ghost Rider, kind of not wanting to be the Ghost Rider, but being forced to change into him to uh, stop you know, people from hurting people and basically just him struggling with becoming the Ghost Rider. The bike does some kind of Mjolnir, uh, Doctor Strange cloak, like it's a sentient thing sometimes. Like even when they separate Danny from the bike, uh, he doesn't necessarily have to hit the gas can to change into Ghost Rider anymore. That was kind of like the first trigger, but then it ends up where he can pretty much summon the bike. And we'll learn a little bit more about that once somebody else comes into the mix. But before that, we're going to get a couple issues with the Punisher. All right, issue five, the first of a two-parter Punisher team up. We get a Jim Lee cover here, so very cool stuff. The Punisher Ghost Rider tie-ins uh, are great, man. Uh, of course, they start off as enemies. Punisher's just here to do his thing. Ghost Rider's trying to do his thing, try to, you know, be the spirit of vengeance, trying to clean up the streets, and uh, they hit head-to-head, -head and they come to blows. So we're going to get some great action. First, we get, you know, we meet up with Frank Castle. We see him taking down bad guys doing what he has to do. The media is already saying that they're working together because they're both riding bikes and they're both seemingly killing people out in the streets. Even though Ghost Rider, I don't believe he's really killing anybody. So Danny Ketch has a girlfriend, Stacy, that <laughs> he doesn't deserve Stacy, man. He's kind of like the worst boyfriend ever, but that's the love interest in this issue. Punisher here, posted up doing his thing. But then Ghost Rider and Punisher cross paths, so. Here we go, that's gonna lead to this confrontation. Punisher tries to shoot Ghost Rider, obviously that doesn't do anything. I believe I posted this panel on Instagram too, like man, this was just awesome stuff, man. 1990 Ghost Rider vs Punisher. Uh, which gets introduced to the villain of this arc, which is the Flag Smasher. And here we have him at the end. Issue 6 doesn't give us another Jim Lee cover, but we get a Texera cover, or Tex, which will get a bunch of great covers from him uh, for the rest of this series. So. Let's jump into part two, Punisher and Ghost Rider. Now they're teaming up against uh, Flag Smasher. So like I you know, showed earlier, they started off, they had a battle as most heroes for their team ups do. And at the end of the day, Punisher's riding on Ghost Rider's bike. <laughs> Boom, just great artwork here, going back and forth between Danny Ketch's life, uh, which has fallen apart and becoming Ghost Rider. Here he is fighting bad guys, busted out his chain and hit him all like bullets or something. So, so far, I mean, we're on issue seven. Now we get introduced uh, to this character, Scarecrow. So it kind of feels like these one-off villain type of deals, which is pretty cool. I mean, a lot of great runs have done that. Swamp Thing does that. It's kind of in between arcs and you'll get these uh, throwaway villain stories. But uh, the artwork maintains amazing artwork. The horror inspired nature of it looks great. The Scarecrow character, another crazy character that they're always willing to do the most violent things. Kind of hard to not, you know, see him as a ripoff from the DC version, but Ghost Rider vs. Scarecrow. So Blackout still plotting on Danny Ketch. He's in there with uh, Barbara Ketch, his sister, during a coma. Come to find out, he kills her. Blackout kills Danny Ketch's sister. That's so crazy, man. So Scarecrow gets killed. Like I said, kind of one and done villain in here. And now we're gonna have to deal with the aftermath of the death of Danny Ketch's sister. Javier Saltera is back on the cover here for issue eight with uh, Blackout on the front. 
Danny Ketch doing his whole uh, philosopher thing here. <laughs> Gotta love the double page spread ad for the Marvel trading cards. But this is also where we get, uh, I forget which one of the enemies put this all female hit squad out on Ghost Rider. So he's got them trailing him. And that'll catch up to us in a few issues as well. So it's like the end of this issue where we get introduced to Mask, which is actually a mutant. And that's going to lead into these, this X-Factor tie-in in in the next issue. All right, so X-Factor and the Morlocks here. Pretty cool to get an X-Factor team up. So I remember getting confused reading this because you got Blackout and then you have Mask going on here. The Mask villain is only for, I believe, this issue. Uh, and, and the Morlocks deal with it. But uh, then we have just Blackout moving forward. Here goes X-Factor and their fancy flying ship at this time they're living in that uh, apocalypse created uh floating apparatus or what have you here we're down with the morlocks they're all disformed and disfigured by mask which will lead us into the next arc with the villain the zodiac so kind of after the zodiac killer and this is a cool ad for the punisher nes game because this was also the ad for the back of new mutants 98 which is deadpool's first appearance just like issue 10 here so same ad on the back Issue 10, awesome cover, got the Zodiac stuff in the background, all black background, and blood, awesome. So there's a killing going on, obviously Ghost Rider, at this point he's pretty much patrolling and looking for vengeance, right? He's riding his bike down buildings, doing badass stuff, and we'll get introduced into this Zodiac character who's dressed like a comic book villain would dress. <laughs> Here we have another Danny Ketch Ghost Rider transformation. The artwork for that, sometimes they'll do like the melting face thing, so we'll see that shortly, I'm sure. Uh, and then here's the Zodiac. So just another villain going around. He, this guy, he's got henchmen. He's got even robotic doppelgangers, so he doesn't ever have to face Ghost Rider in person. But the art is cool, and the fight scenes are cool. He flies away on this comic book flying device, <laughs> and Ghost Rider is pissed. And then that's when we see somebody on the tail of this new Ghost Rider, right? He's been all over the media supposedly teaming up with Punisher looks a little bit like Johnny Blaze not before we get Nightmare which is cool we have the cover for issue 11 and then we have Nightmare visiting Danny Ketch in his Nightmare because he knows about the Ghost Rider stuff and it's the only place he can catch him love the Nightmare stuff uh, very cool which will obviously lead into uh, somebody familiar with Nightmare at the end of this issue and then that'll be the premise for the next one but here we're following the life of Danny Ketch again his life kind of sucks man flashing over here to some Johnny Blaze action I love how he pulls out the shoddy on this guy at the bar love this high score contest for the impossible silver surfer NES game flashing back to uh, Zodiac here he's always smoking a stogie because he's a bad guy meanwhile uh, this is where we learn a little bit more I think of Ghost Rider himself. Do we get his name here? Zarathos? Or is that a little bit later on? But Nightmare visiting uh, Danny Ketch and Ghost Rider separately in the Nightmare realm, which is pretty cool. And then boom, like I said, Doctor Strange at the end getting involved when forces of magic are here. So issue 12 will give us a Doctor Strange cover. Gotta love 90s Doctor Strange. Got Ghost Rider trapped in a bubble. Gotta love that Double Dragon 3 ad leading into this awesome double page spread with Rent Raw and Topaz. This is a, a shot that I posted on Instagram too. I just love this man, running up on the bad guy, seeing the skull and the eye, seeing Ghost Rider through the rear view mirror, which somebody shared with me, apparently they made a cover out of that. And this is where the whole missing children thing comes full circle. They're using them as part of this magical machine thing to do something evil. That's what I guess the Zodiac's behind the whole time. They have powers that can hurt Ghost Rider, weaponry and such. And this is just one of the few times Zodiac hits him with the, I'm really a robot. <laughs> I always liked the cover for issue 13. Almost had more of like a painted look to it. And it looks like it was text with, is that Jimmy Palmiotti? Some early Palmiotti work. Looks great though. A nice addition to the cover so far. Again, this makes me want to play Double Dragon 3. See, here's what I'm talking about, like transformation into da uh, from Danny Ketch into Ghost Rider. They do those horror type of panels in that transformation. And come on, man, how could you not love the artwork in this run? Melting down to the skull, the big flames, Barbara Ketch. They put Palmiotti here. <laughs> but man, that's really is crazy that he killed. they killed his sister and his mother takes it obviously so hard. That's devastating. I don't remember Ninja Turtle cereal. Where was I? Because I was definitely around during this time. <laughs> Ghost Rider just taking down street punks, giving them the penance stare, doing Ghost Rider stuff, while his mother is uh, 
kind of being seen with shady people. This is the first little hint of that, but we'll touch on that in a few issues on who his mother's getting involved with. Again, Stacy, man, too good for Danny. He kind of keeps pushing her away. I mean, obviously, he doesn't want her to get hurt. Uh, Snowblind here, some drug dealer, bad guy that uh, Ghost Rider's going to end up taking down in great paneling and fashion. But I thought that this bike looked so weird, the way that they had to draw that. It's like, what is the shape of this bike? Snow blind, the villain who's actually blind, so he can't be hit with the pen and stare. <laughs> and then boom, Johnny Blaze, y'all. Very cool. All right, so next issue, Johnny Blaze versus Ghost Rider. Awesome cover here. Love how uh, Johnny Blaze got the jump on him. Now we have the text artwork, and he's getting swaggy now, just going by his pseudonym. But man, I feel like Joe Jusco borrowed this for the 1992 Marvel Masterpiece portrait that he did. I don't know, man. Maybe some inspiration, maybe not. But love the iteration of Johnny Blaze without the spirit of vengeance. And here's another instance where uh, Danny Ketch summons the bike, smashes through Johnny Blaze's hideout or whatever, and then he transforms into Ghost Rider. But that's where he gets trapped, and that's where we see the Zarathos. So I'm not sure where that, how far that goes back, but I guess the spirit, his name is Zarathos. And he inhabits hosts to become the Ghost Rider, the Spirit of Vengeance. And it's kind of here like a retelling and origin of Johnny Blaze and how he made a deal with Mephisto. The Mephisto stuff coming up is pretty cool too, man. So this interaction right here, for some reason, Hellfire gets drawn from Ghost Rider trying to go into Johnny Blaze, it seems like. It's almost like the Spirit of Vengeance wanted to go back to Johnny Blaze, but it went into the shotgun, giving the shotgun unlimited Hellfire ammo that does hurt Ghost Rider. So now Johnny Blaze has a very powerful weapon. Then we have the famous Tex cover art for issue 15, the infamous glow in the dark. I think they had a second printing as well where it had a gold background instead of black. And I, I don't think that was glow in the dark, but man, Amazing splash page, double page spread following that. Look at this artwork, huge Ghost Rider on the bottom. Battle Toads ad, awesome skull transformation, going back to Danny Ketch. And remember that all female hit squad, so now they're becoming a, a thorn in his side. An injured uh, Ghost Rider from the Hell Fire Blast, uh, fighting Blackout, leading to another confrontation here, awesome. And love the t-shirts, man. Wish we can go back and get these shirts. There's some uh, all over print ones, I think in the following issues. And then boom, Ghost Rider gets taken out by one of the female assassins. This gave me like Spider-Man McFarlane vibes, like the paneling and the big gunshot, boom, at the bottom. Love this. Blackout gets his face messed up yet again, <laughs> which will lead us to a Spider-Man team up. So quite a few team ups so far. In issue 16, amazing cover with Spider-Man, Johnny Blaze and Hobgoblin in the reflection of the bike, pumpkin bombs text on the cover as well another splash page kind of a looming ghost rider exhausted over his bike dying always coming back to the cemetery it was kind of always him and his sister spot now she's buried there and there's some other final showdowns that'll happen there as well he's being looked over by johnny blaze in the hospital he's been out for the last two days and what's funny is his family his mom and his girl have grown fond of Johnny Blaze because he saved him from the cemetery and he's been there watching him and everything. Some more great t-shirts in this ad. What's cool is like, this is the uh, Inferno Hobgoblin, the uh, Nasir, Nathir, what's his name? Nasir, demon possessed Hobgoblin. So that's who shows up here. And it, it kind of ties in really well with Ghost Rider because Hobgoblin's whole thing is like religion based, right? Uh, and speaking of which, this is the guy who's kind of got his hooks into uh, Mrs. Catch, Danny's mother. And that's gonna come to a head pretty soon. I thought this ad was funny. It's like Jim Lee's Cyclops, but we're just gonna quickly redo the bottom. No big deal. <laughs> but this religious sect or whatever um, is promising to bring back Barbara from the dead for um, Danny's mother. So she's obviously as a parent willing to do whatever it takes. Uh, flashing back to what Hobgoblin did that makes him evil in the eyes of Ghost Rider. And, and again, I was saying Hobgoblin's whole thing is this religious cleanse the earth of all sinners type of thing. Spidey is hot on Hobgoblin's trail. And that's how we get Spider-Man into the mix here. Very cool though. Love this era of Spider-Man. Issue 17 will give us an awesome Ghost Rider vs. Hobgoblin cover. Spider-Man in the back here. Spider-Man, just kind of like with Punisher, confrontation with Ghost Rider. Doesn't really know what Ghost Rider's motives or intentions are. 
Double page spread gives you McFarlane-esque Spidey. I'm here for it. And then again, you could find Ghost Rider at the cemetery here. So that's where Johnny Blaze finds him or follows him, I should say. Whatever happened to Palladium books? Amazing artwork here, Ghost Rider. Continuing to have amazing artwork from page to page. Even the Spider-Man stuff here, I'm digging it. The Hobgoblin stuff. This was crazy. Johnny Blaze shoving his shotgun in this guy's mouth. So it all comes to a head where they end up kidnapping Danny Ketch's mother. So Ghost Rider is going crazy trying to find who has his mother. That's got to be a scary thing, man. Like His sister just died. Hobgoblin kidnaps his mom. Spider-Man is like, let me take care of it. This is my bad guy. Giving a glimpse of Jason, Philip, Mackendale, who is Hobgoblin at this time. So we get the little happy ending and the teasing of the return of Barbara Ketch. Before we look at the cover, you got to love the X-Men action figure ad. From KB Toy Stores on the back. Uh, awesome cover again. Issue 18. This is by Nelson. Gives you that like photorealistic look. Love the box art too for the direct market edition. Awesome splash. Danny Ketch, Johnny Blaze. Again, doing the transformation. So we learn who... Uh, Reverend Steig, Steig, who he reports to or who, who who his boss is. Again, these transformation shots are some of the best here. And here's those all over prints that I was talking about. So we learn the big boss is actually Mephisto, the very same one who cursed Johnny Blaze to be the spirit of vengeance to begin with. Which brings us to the last issue that I have, far from the run being over, but issue 19 with this jacked looking Mephisto and this new villain who makes a deal with Mephisto this guy that wants to kill himself but can't do it so kind of prays for it and look at Mephisto yo he looks crazy love the splash page on the right here Ghost Rider hanging this down upside down again he's gonna get answers one way or the other trying to find out where the Zodiac is here's Mephisto now in his realm making the offer to this guy but of course he's the devil and he's the liar this guy becomes this kind of creature, which we don't really get to fully see explored in this issue. Here's Zodiac smoking a cigar, like I said, looking like Martian Manhunter. Our new suicide guy now shows up naked, a la Terminator 2 style, uh, to some lady's house. She gives him some of her ex-boyfriend's clothes, but they're kind of like clubbing clothes <laughs> or whatever. Uh, and his whole thing is that he was told by Mephisto that the only one that can kill him is Ghost Rider. So he's basically trying to provoke Ghost Rider into killing him. Look at this great artwork, this horror inspired style looks great. So we don't get the conclusion on issue 19. Uh, I'm gonna have to hunt down those other issues if I wanna read the rest. All right guys, so there we go. I hope you had fun. I know these can be kind of lengthy, but I loved going over the covers, the interior artwork, Mackie's writing. What's unfortunate is like looking at this creative team, this was like their best work and it's sad that they haven't really continued to put out as much content sure they've all gone on to do their own things and this is you know almost 40 years old let me know what you think about this ghost rider run in the comments down below and does it deserve the omnibus treatment by marvel whether it's three volumes or whatever or should they start with the volume one the johnny blaze stuff i mean let me know in the comments down below i thank you for watching stay minty fresh peace